every church needs a website today. Now, there's lots of people that would love to create ones for you and charge you lots of money to do that, but you don't have to do that. You can create them very simply, very easily, and totally for free. This little video will give you an overview on how to do that. Please, before you look at it, look at this video because you need to learn how to use the basic program. I don't get into all of the details on that in this video. I do give you a good overview on how you can use it to create a website for your church. But please look at my other little four minute video on Linda before you jump into this one. Check that out and then we'll get started on how to create a website for your church using WordPress. Here's a sample website that I created for you so that you can see how you can create a website for your church using WordPress. Now, in most blogs, you are familiar with this section right here where you add different comments, um, different material, and it goes in reverse chronological order. And that works out just great for a blog. Most blogs, too, then have the different categories. You can click on them, find out which blogs went under those categories, you have an area for recent posts, all of those sorts of things, and that's just fine. What makes this into a website, though, is WordPress does allow you to create sections, to create pages. Now, in contrast to the blog, which is a reverse chronological order, and it changes as you add each one, these pages are static. The information stays the same. For example, I can click on About Our Church, and this is where you could tell people all about your church. You could give a gospel presentation in the Good News section. Under the Staff section, you could tell about your people, where you meet, all of the details, what, whatever you wanted to do, and you could arrange these however you wanted to do it. Now, how did we do this? How did we make this happen in WordPress? Let me show you some areas that you want to work with. You go up to your dashboard, and first of all, when you want to create a page, you want to write it up, not under the post section, which comes up by default, but you want to go into the page section. Now, it's very similar how you do it. You give it a title, you can add your text, you can also, on any of these sections, you can make them as long as you want them to be. You can add media. You can put in an image. This is where you could put in your staff images. You could add video. You could link to YouTube. You could add an audio file. You could add any other kind of media. You could have a PowerPoint presentation. You could have a PDF if you want someone to sign up for camp. Perhaps you would have the PDF uh, for your church sign up right there. They could download it, fill it in, bring it in on Sunday. Whatever you wanted to do on the pages, you would create them right here. Now, having created your pages, there's another area of WordPress that's very important, and that is that you want to be sure that your design supports pages. And you see in this small thumbnail of the design that I'm using, See how there are the little tabs that support the pages? Not all WordPress themes do that. So when you're picking your theme, you would want to be sure that it's one that does support the pages. For example, let's click on this one, and you see even though it has all of the same information, it doesn't have the page breakdown. So you want to be sure that whatever theme you use does allow for pages. So I'm going to close that off. We don't want to use that one. And I won't take time to go through the different ones. You can play around and look at it. But you can see that we did pick a theme that does support the pages. Now, the other thing that's very important on the design section are the widgets. Now, this is just a little term that means all of these extra things that you can add on the side. Now, you can play around with these, you can retitle them, you can do all kinds of different things, but let me show you one right here. I decided on the sidebar that I wanted to put in my pages. Now, that's, that's what they call those sections, but I want you to notice this. Let's go into Edit. And you can title it whatever you would like. Now. Just trust me on this, you probably don't remember what was on the website, but actually the first page that I had was about our church. And so I thought that I would title the pages section about that, but then I thought, oh, that's kind of redundant. So you can just, uh, you can change this. Let me change it. Uh, let's 
cut it away, isn't it? Okay. What I want to say is something like, let's say, get to know us. And we're going to change it. We're going to save the changes. And then let's look at the site now. And before it said about our church, and now it says getting to know us. And you can see how we have the navigation here, but it's always good to repeat your navigation. Um, this way, people also they would click on that page, and that would take them to about our church. Good news, staff, whatever. And you can create as many of these sections as you want. If you get more than what goes across, it'll just start a new layer down here. So, so you can do that. And just being able to do this, being able to create the pages, is what will really make your blog into a website. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, that's okay, but, you know, that header is kind of boring. Uh, can you do anything about that? Yes, you can, and this is so easy. This is just a kick. Go back into the dashboard, and then you go into Design, and go into Custom Image Header. Now, to um, what you can do on this, and th this is really simple. You can upload something that's exactly the size here. Now, on my website for my ministry, um, EffectiveChurchCom.com, I created that header in Photoshop and kind of fiddled around with that and all. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything fancy. This can be so simple. What you can do is you can just choose an image from your computer or something, a picture you took, whatever you want. Let's just pick an image, and what I did here, I'm uh, just going into my Microsoft clip art. I got a free image off of the Microsoft site um, using this one because that sort of looks like Ventura, California. In fact, it looks a whole lot like our beach area. And so you upload the image. Now, it doesn't matter how big it is. Um, really, none of that matters because you see you can take this little bar here, this little um, lighter image, and that's how big the section is that will fit on the WordPress thing. And all you have to do is just line this up however you want to line it up, crop the header, and that's all there is to it. Now we visit the site, and ta-da, look, we have a whole uh, a header that just works. Now, one thing though that you have to be careful of, this can be very frustrating. Uh, the text in doing it this way is just in a certain place. You can't move it around. Now you can change the text on your dashboard, but that's where it's going to be. Now you notice that the picture, if you look closely, wasn't quite big enough to stretch all the way to the end. That is why I picked something with a blue background. See, it doesn't quite fit there, but because it's a blue background, it works. When you are using one of the templates, you can't change the colors in the template. That's just something you can't do. Again, this is free. Um, it's simple. You can do some great things with it, but you do kind of have to go along with the template. Now, you can make changes. You can pick a different template, different colors. You can put in a different image. And you might want to play around with it to get it exactly the way you want it. But I think this looks great um, for doing a simple website for a church. It works. Again, it's free for church plants, smaller churches, a ministry within the church. You can do a lot with it. Um, having said how simple and easy it is, let me just say on my, um, my, my website for my ministry, it, which I'm, I'm, I'm still working on, and or I'd show it to you right now, um, and but go to it after you see this, EffectiveChurchCom.com. I have a lot of material. It's a very complex site using exactly the same processes. You can do wonderful things. You can create a great site. People can access it from lots of different people's computers. People can add to it, edit it, whatever. And again, it doesn't cost your church anything. I hope you enjoyed the little video on how to create a church website, but let me tell you that's just the start of the wonderful ways that you can use multi-channel communications to grow your church and change lives. For information on my full day seminar, please go to www.effectivechurchcom.com and I hope to see you there. Lord bless you as you serve Him today.